success over the years in this tournament, California and Florida. We welcome you to the hills of eastern Pennsylvania, Boyertown, Pennsylvania, and Bear Stadium, along with Larry Sorensen. I'm John Sanders, California, Florida. That's certainly no surprise. It's also a matchup of a, an experienced team against a younger team. Well, Miami made it to the American Legion World Series a year ago, and although they didn't make it to the final game, they did pick up some tournament experience, and that will help them. Chino, on the other hand, has a very young squad. Look for them again next year, because they'll only be losing three members of this year's team. Well, let's show you how they made it this far this year. The favorite was Omaha, Nebraska. They got to them early. They did lose 15 to 1 last night, but because they were the last undefeated team, they got the automatic, automatic berth in the championship game today. Meanwhile, for Miami, two wins over Salem, Oregon. They did lose their only loss by 10 to Chino earlier in this tournament, and they faced elimination earlier today, won that game 6-3 over Salem, Oregon, and Salem thus finishes third. Experience versus youth, but also offense against pitching. Well, and you know that I think good pitching will shut down good hitting. But this Chino team is led by Frank Hinojosa, who is hitting 462 for the tournament. He has 24 RBIs to go along with it. Kind of an unusual club. They're averaging 10.6 runs per game, but they only have four home runs, and they have only stolen five bases in the entire regional and World Series. And despite facing that elimination game earlier today, Miami was able to save its ace for this game. They took a chance, but they have Fernando. Rodriguez coming back. He's the complete package. He's 10 and 1 for the year with a 1.12 ERA in the regional and world series, 3 and 0, oh, and he has not given up an earned run. We'll find out if that good pitching can stop the good offense. We've got the American Legion 1994 World Series Championship game coming your way. The starting lineups are next. The American Legion World Series for 1994 is being brought to you by Buick and your local Buick dealers, and by Gatorade. Buick Regal is winning the hearts of Americans who once drove imports. Now Championship event for the third time in the history of this stadium. It is a beautiful ballpark, not capacity yet, but it continues to fill up on a very pleasantly cool evening. Hi, I'm Jim Palmer. If you haven't refinanced your home yet, it's not too late. The lowest as Miami, Florida takes the field defensively. The lineup begins with the left fielder, Jeremy Coronado. Did not play last night. He's back in there tonight. Batting second is the shortstop, Ryan Rasmussen. In the third spot, the first baseman, Eric Gomez. We've talked about him. Frank Hinojosa, the catcher, is the cleanup hitter. Followed by the third baseman, Benny Aguilaro. Second baseman, Jeff Bajanaro. And then in the number seven spot, it's the center fielder, Rocky O'Brien, batting eight. Playing right field, Travis McCall, he could pitch if needed tonight, but Cody Trask is the starting pitcher. Defensively for Miami, Florida tonight, Mike lopez Cao will be the left fielder. He was a last-minute replacement. Esteban Barrios is in center with Alex Miranda in right field. Roy Muro is very good in the dirt at first base. Luis Cabral will play second. Jose Zabala is the leader of this club. He's at shortstop, and George Carragal will be the third baseman. Mark Suarez is behind home plate tonight, and the pitcher will be Fernando Rodriguez. Rodriguez is 5'11", 170 pounds. He just turned 19 this month. Throws four pitches. He throws his fastball in the low 80s. Has excellent control. Likes to pitch in, which is unusual in a young pitcher in this day and age of aluminum bats. Has a slurve to go along with the good fastball. The number two pitcher last year for Miami. And as we said earlier, he is 10 and 1 for the season with a 1.12 ERA. And there are not many 19-year-olds playing because you cannot turn 19 before the 1st of August and still be eligible for this championship. But Fernando, last year a redshirt at Alabama. He'll transfer to Florida International this year. He'll be facing Jeremy Coronado leading off and playing left field. Coronado's batting average is 294. Chino, California, team batting average of 358. And they have scored 106 runs coming into this championship game. No homers, one run batted in for Coronado, who is 16 years old, 5'9", 150 pounds. First pitch is hit out of play left side. It was the threat of some rain a couple of days ago, but really cleared off beautifully. We had a gorgeous, cool night last night. And then earlier today, very comfortable for the elimination game between Salem and Miami. Meanwhile, Chino just waited. 
talked to their coaches, the coach Pacino, Joe Marcos, who's coaching down at third. He said no ill effects from a 15 to 1 loss last night. They were very loose about it. Preferred to play only one game today rather than two. It's a loose ball club, said so they were all laughing and joking around after the game last night. So no ill effects from that. Skied into right center field. Barrios is there for out number one. The ball game is underway. Ryan Rasmussen will be the batter, the shortstop. Hitting 304, and the tournament numbers that we give you for both teams include the regionals and the World Series. We keep talking about the gaudy uh, runs per game average that Chino has. It's amazing that they can score 10 per game. The coach has said, we're as surprised as anybody. We're not exactly sure how we're doing it. About a month ago, we started swinging the bats, and it seems like everything falls in. We told you they only have four home runs and five stolen bases. A 304 average, as you saw for Ryan. From Chino Hills, he'll be a senior at Ayala High School, 17 years old, 5'10", 160 pounds. Here's the two-ball pitch. It's bounced back to the pitcher. A one-hopper. Fernando Rodriguez takes care of out number two. If you look at Rodriguez's numbers, Larry, coming in, they have been outstanding. He pitched 23 in the third inning, coming in 16 strikeouts. Well, the teams have only hit 148 against him for the year, and he's only given up 12 base hits in the 23 and a third innings that he's pitched. Not a lot of movement on his fastball, but he spots it very well inside the strike zone. Facing Eric Gomez, the first baseman. Gomez is 18 years old. He'll be a freshman at Cypress Junior College this year. They call him Diesel. I think you can see why. 6'2", 190 pounder, fouls that one out of play. He's 18 years old. Most of these players went to either Don Lugo, where Joe Marcos is the coach, or Ayala High School, where Jim Weiss, who is the pitching coach and is on the bench, is the head coach there. It says six foot two, 190 pounds for the diesel. I'm not sure that that's an accurate statement at this point in the season. It might be approximations. <laughs> Two balls, one strike. Two outs, nobody on. We're just underway. Out of play again. That'll even the count of two balls, two strikes. He's a gap hitter, though, in a line drive hitter, and he's got pretty decent speed for a man his size. Just one home run, as we showed you, but he does have eight doubles as well. This is the kind of team that Chino is. They hit a lot of balls in the gaps. And hope that people can't find them sometimes in the very lush grass that they have at Bear Stadium. It's deep. It's lush. Full count, three and two, two outs, nobody on. Scoreless game, top half of inning number one. Hit on the ground to second base. Cabral up with it. A one, two, three, top of the first inning. A fly ball to center and a couple of ground outs. So we're going to turn to the bottom part of the first inning in this scoreless ball game. We're going to be setting the lineup for Miami in just a moment. We talked about this ballpark. Let's give you some of the dimensions if we get the opportunity. Not real big because you look down the lines here. It's only 320. It is 350 then in the power alleys, and it is, if you look to straightaway center field out beyond the fence to where the flagpole is, it is 380 feet. I would have to think, for the most part, a hitter's ballpark. There's no wind at all that is a factor for this ball game tonight. A little bit of wind earlier in the afternoon, but tonight everything is dead in the outfield. The gaps are the area where the ball really carries well. 350 into those gaps. Let's set the lineup for Miami, Florida. Leading off is the shortstop, Jose Zabala. He is the spark plug for this team. Right fielder is Alex Miranda. Batting third is the center fielder. Outstanding power man, Esteban Barrios. The left fielder is Mike lopez Cow. Mike Suarez doing the catching tonight. At first base, it's Rory Murrow. Murrow at first base. George Carrigal is the third baseman. We saw him with an assist in the first inning. Luis Cabral, the second baseman. And batting ninth is the pitcher, Fernando Rodriguez. And the defense for Chino, Jeremy Coronado, is back in the lineup tonight. He'll play left field. Rocky O'Brien's a football player with very good speed. He's in center, and Travis McCall will be in right field. Eric Gomez is the first baseman with Jeff Baginaro at second. Ryan Rasmussen is the shortstop, and Ben Aguilera will play third base. The leader of this ball club, Frank Hinojosa. He was a 47th round draft pick by the Dodgers behind home plate. 
Cody Trask is only 16 years old. He's got a good fastball. He'll get it up to home plate about 85 miles an hour. His secret pitch will be the straight change. You don't see many 16-year-olds that have the confidence to throw it any time in the count, but Cody Trask does. He's a little bit tired because he played on a Mickey Mantle championship team that just finished up. They were national champions, and Cody took some time off from that. Now he's back with Chino. He's six foot two, 190 pounds. He's also a football player. As you mentioned, O'Brien, a football player. He's a tight end. He faces Jose Zabala, 10 for 38 in the tournament. The first pitch is way upstairs. A 263 tournament average for Zabala. Changeup is outside. Two balls and no strikes. Cody Trask making his second start, fourth appearance of the tournament. He has given up 16 hits in 11 and a third innings coming in. Throws a strike for the first time. It's called by Wayne Morris. The man in blue behind the plate and for a world championship. Should have a full complement of umpires, and we do. We have three on the bases and two down the lines as well. Six-man crew. There's a breaking ball. It misses. The count is three and one. A lot of off-speed stuff so far from Cody Trask. He will have to establish that fastball to make the off-speed stuff more effective. Look for a lot of fun attempts from this team tonight, especially with the high graph. They like to put it down. Fly ball into left center field. Diving as O'Brien can't get it. It rolls to the track, and it's Coronado to pick it up and speeding his way to third without a throw, standing for the three-base hit to lead off is Zabala. It looked like it was going to be a fairly routine fly ball in the gap. Lopez Cao and Esteban Barrios had a hard time coming up with it. I'm sorry. Coronado and O'Brien just couldn't quite get there. There's the dive by O'Brien. Little mix up in the outfield. Zabala with a leadoff triple and immediately Miami with a threat. Coming in, the young men from Miami were very happy that Omaha had such an outstanding record because that took a little pressure off. Here's a team that made it to the World Series last year, got knocked out on the third day. They went one and two and went home, but they have come back. Alex Miranda swings and misses for a strike. You see his average of 237. No homers, one extra base hit. It's a double. A leadoff triple has Zabala at third. Miranda swinging a miss. There's a fly ball the other way. The gap toward right center field. McCall and O'Brien. This time O'Brien runs it down, tagging and heading home with the first run of the ball game is Zabala. And Miami breaks out on top. Good job by Miranda, the contact hitter hitting in the second hole just to make contact, make sure he drives the ball into the outfield grass. O'Brien plays very shallow in center field. He had to go a little bit back to his left, so there was no chance at home plate. Sacrifice fly and RBI for Miranda, his fifth of the tournament. And Esteban Barrios will be the batter. He provides a lot of the power. This is a Miami team that's hit 16 home runs in the tournament. Six of them by Barrios. Barrios is probably the best player that Miami does have. He's got a chance to be player of the year, depending how his tournament ends up. Got two grand slams amongst those six home runs. Ball kicks out of the glove of Hinojosa. He was their regional MVP. Wolfson Junior College, Dade Wolfson is where he is headed. Barrios is 18 years old, 5'9, 160. Looks like he may be a bit stockier than that, too. Check out the legs. You know that he's going to grow into that body even a little bit more. There, you notice he does have the open stance, but his first move with that open right foot is back toward the pitcher yeah, right back towards the pitcher so that he can drive the ball he's got good power to the opposite field also has very good speed he's got 12 doubles in the tournament the 3-1 pitch is swinging a miss and it's full of three and two 
A leadoff triple by Zabala, the sacrifice fly by Alex Miranda and Miami, Florida. Leading Chino, California, one to nothing in the championship game of the 1994 American Legion World Series. Strikes him out. Looks to me like Cody Trask got just a little bit ticked off that he gave up a run so early in the ball game. So he went back to his fastball. He started the ball game off doing some off speed stuff and some curveballs. He just blazes this one past Esteban Barrios. This is my fastball. Let's see what you got. Throws right down the middle, right by Barrios. Out number two of the inning. Mike Lopez Cow, 11 hits in the championship. He gets the off speed breaking ball that drops in. 324 average. He's hit three homers, driven in eight. He is in left field. Swing and a miss. Lopez Cow has some tournament experience. College World Series tournament experience for the University of Miami. Remember the squad that played in Omaha this past summer. 19 years old. That last curveball was a very effective pitch from Cody Trask. What he's going to do with a curveball that big is try to throw it out of the strike zone. If he has to keep it inside the strike zone, he can get hurt with it because it is off speed and the hitter has time to adjust. He's got to throw it out of the strike zone. Filed away, the count remains. A ball and two strikes. A run on one hit so far here in the inning. Here's the big curveball. Now, if this stays knee high two pitches ago, it means that he's going to get hit with it. But watch how it breaks down out and gets the batter thinking it's going to stay up there, but it doesn't. It dips down to the dirt. Good pitch. Goes back to the fastball and he fouls it back. Count remains a ball and two strikes. On the 19 year old left hand batting Mike Lopez Cow. Graduate of Southwest High School. He's also done some catching, but he is being used on this Legion team in the outfield. Did not play last night, was back in the lineup this afternoon for the elimination game. Miami stayed alive with the 6 3 victory over Salem, Oregon. Our congratulations to the young men from Salem, picking up third place in the 94 tournament. After a pitch away, strikes out. A couple of strikeouts, but a run in the inning. So after one, it is Miami leading Chino one nothing. Back for the top of the second in Boyertown in just a moment. You'd have to live in a cave not to realize the significance of football. Boom! He steps up to the plate. What? A frozen rope right down the pipe. Go long, baby, go long. We got a full plate cooking. Now up to the face and right to the jaw. Just inches to go. Good. Fly. Ball. The way. NFL on ESPN. NFL on ESPN is sponsored locally by Force and Olds Buick GMC. Right on the 71, right on the price. Here's three great reasons to try the Mandarin Taste Restaurants. Diamond Bar, where our menu is always prepared with a health-conscious person in mind. Anaheim Hills, where our delicious variety of dishes range from sweet and sour to hot and spicy. Lake Forest, where you and your family can enjoy a Mandarin Taste Sunday brunch. All three locations also offer delicious dinners, plus lunch combinations starting at 475. For great food, service, and atmosphere, it's the Mandarin Taste, conveniently located in Diamond Bar. ESPN. Beautiful night here in eastern Pennsylvania. Championship game of the 1994 American Legion World Series along with Larry Sorensen. I'm John Sanders and it's great to have you with us for the championship game. If you're the American Legion you think it's very great to have Buick Motor Company providing support for the tournament this year. As a matter of fact they were donating $100 for every car sold and that meant a grand total of $628,400 donated by local dealers to local American Legion teams. So our thanks to Buick Motor Division. Top of the second is underway. 
Here is the presentation of the check from the Buick Motor Company. I'll tell you, that's the only way these amateur teams survive is to get some help from some of the big corporations. And without that, we wouldn't have the great programs that we do all over the country. Appreciate it. Frank Hinojosa, a 462 average. Only one homer, but if there's somebody on base, he gets them home. He got 24 runs batted in. They buzz him up and in with the fastball, two and one. We talked earlier about how Fernando Rodriguez would pitch people inside, and it's very obvious that that's what he's trying to do to Frank Hinojosa. Doesn't want him to extend his arms and drive the ball to the gaps. Pops it foul back and out of play. Keep in mind that Frank Hinojosa does not have a lot of experience behind the plate. He really became a full-time catcher in midseason. But despite that, he was drafted by the Los Angeles Dodgers as a catcher. Did not sign. He's heading to Chaffee Junior College. He's a graduate from Ayala High School. Frank is 18. Pops another one foul back and out of play. But Larry, you mentioned the fact that he's a little beat up. He's got some knee problems, shin splints. He has shin splints and also a bad ankle. So as you watch him behind home plate tonight, he will have a little trouble with his mobility and agility. He has eight doubles. He's very patient. He's walked 11 times and only struck out three. Grounds it to Zabala, scoops and throws him out. The first four have been retired by Fernando Rodriguez. Three of them on ground outs. Brings up the number five hitter, Benny Aguilaro. Was a pitcher last night as Chino, California was bombed by Salem 15 to 1. It was a night when I think the boys kind of took the night off. You see the batting average 429 for Aguilera, 14 ribbies. He's also got six dubbies, 18 hits in this series, a little looper towards second base, fielded on one hop, and Zabala takes care of him. ball really jammed Aguilera as well. Again, Fernando Rodriguez going inside with the fastball. Here's Jeff Baginaro. 395 average. He has hit a homer. Baginaro also has five doubles in the tournament. Pitches ball one. You look at the gaudy slugging percentages of all these different Chino hitters as they come up to the plate. Again, only four home runs. Doubles is the area that they make that up. They've got 41. They've only given up 14 to their opponents in these tournaments. 501 team slugging percentage. That's good in any league, isn't it? I, I would think so, yes. You're talking about the entire team. Only two players in the starting lineup hitting under 300. It's on the corner. That's a called strike. One and two the count. Contrast that. There are three players hitting over 400 and another at 395. Pass ball. This is down and away. Two balls, two strikes to count. 19-year-old Fernando Rodriguez has had an outstanding summer. He's got the miniature goatee going. Did you notice that? Cody Trask has got the full grown one going. Fernando goes with the miniature. Fernando, we're told, and we've seen a pretty good variety so far, in addition to the goatee, has pretty much all the pitches. He's the whole package, and he allows his first base run. Well, what I like about what Fernando is doing so far tonight is he's moving the ball around very well in inside the strike zone. He moves that fastball in, then he goes with a breaking ball away, follows it with the breaking ball away. It's only the sixth walk that he's allowed in the tournament. 24 plus innings. If you watch the signs from Carlos Hernandez, what he's doing is giving the location of how he wants his club to pitch to the opposing hitters. Fernandez Jr. You saw flashing the signs also with some college experience as an assistant at Miami, but not with them any longer. It's Rocky O'Brien. Larry mentioned the football abilities, and that kind of split Rocky O'Brien's time, especially in the regional. He had to fly back and forth between football practice at Ayala High School, where he's going to be a senior, and the regional. But he's here for the championship round and in the final game. 
He's a running back and a linebacker. On one pitch is a good one for a strike. And Coach Joe Marco said sometimes Rocky brings that football instinct out to the baseball field. Very aggressive, particularly in the outfield. Has very good power. Also very good speed. He'll be a senior this year at Ayala High School. But this is his final year of Legion baseball. And the outside corner, a great pitch to strike out a walk and a man left. We played an inning and a half in Boyertown, Pennsylvania. The 94 American Legion Championship game, Miami leading Chino, California, 1-0. He packs heavy. She packs light. She wears silk. He wears wool. He's comfortable at 68 degrees. She prefers 72. Good thing they own a Buick Park Avenue with available dual zone climate control. 72 for her, 68 for him. Too bad everything isn't as accommodating as Park Avenue. From Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. Keith told us that he would never, ever get a chance to meet Ken Griffey, and Make-A-Wish has granted that for him. Hi. Hi. How are you? This may be the only wish that he ever has, and it's like, yeah, I've never turned anyone down, and I won't, because you never know how long they have. Anything you want to know? Keith said the only thing I want from you is a bat, and he wanted to toss. Those are the only two things that he wanted. It's an experience that you can't forget. Is this your favorite player right here? Yes. You picked a good one. Junior shooting sports, flag education, Boy State, veterans benefits, community service. Looking for real community involvement? High school oratorical contests. Look to the American Legion. Baseball. 3.1 million wartime veterans asking you to become a part of our community service. America's veterans face real challenges in getting their earned benefits. Books and pamphlets tell how to apply to the Veterans Administration, but with complicated forms and regulations, veterans need personal service. That's why an American Legion service officer is a real friend. You don't need to be a legionnaire for us to help you. The American Legion service officer proves we remember the vet so no one forgets. And because there are so many young players involved in this World Series, Larry, uh, the Major League scouts do show up, start taking an early look at maybe some future prospects. Well, they have some free time on their hands as well. One nothing lead for Miami, Florida. As they come up to bat in the bottom of the second inning. Mark Suarez, the catcher, will lead off, followed by Roy Muro and George. Caragall. Five, six, and seven do up in the inning. Suarez is 18 years old. He'll be a freshman at Florida International University this year. 206 average, a couple of homers. Seven runs batted in. Not much for average, but more in the power department. Hits this one hard, but foul past Carlos Hernandez Sr. is coaching at third. As far as 6'4", 220. Good size. Very agile for his size, too. Does a good job behind home plate. Got a quick release. Trask, after giving up the leadoff triple, then the sacrifice fly, came back to strike out hitters three and four to end that first inning. Finds himself down by a run. Comes off the catcher's glove. They're going to have to throw him out and do. Three straight strikeouts now for Cody Trask. Showing a very good fastball. This has some jump to it as it gets in the upper part of the strike zone. Throws it right by not only Mark Suarez, he throws it by his catcher, Frank Hinojosa, too, who we told you is a little bit inexperienced behind home plate. We also mentioned that Cody Trask, a member of the world champion Mickey Mantle League team, along with Jeff Baginaro. Aginaro and Trask were teammates on that team, so they played a lot of baseball. And that's quite a summer when you can find yourself in two championship games, two World Series in the same summer. Giro batting 357 with a homer and four runs batted in. He has 10 hits, 28 at bats in the tournament. He fouls it back to the screen. 
Larry, we've seen quite often that the team that reaches this round and gets to this level is usually the team that plays better defense and makes fewer mistakes and gets some pitching. Although offense has been quite the focus so far in this tournament, we've had some very high scoring ball games all the way along. Swing and a miss. And again, they'll have to throw him out at first, but Trask doing a number. Four straight strikeouts. Well, what Trask has done is he's gone to his fastball a little bit more, make people respect that. He started off throwing the changeup and curveball. He had that in his mind that that's what he needed to do to be successful. Seems to me like he's gone to the fastball more now. He's got a good one.